Hello everyone. Let's begin the third part of topic two. In this part, we will study functions in programming, which is sometimes called subroutines. Then, as a summary of the programming techniques we have studied, let's try our hand at script analysis. We, in fact, make a program in a practice exercise. We start with functions in programming. The notion of function or similar idea introduces a convenient way in programming, and it has been used in many programming languages. Let's consider as an example the program computes multiplication that we studied in topic one. This is the program that computes multiplication. This program does multiplication using only normal basic arithmetic operator addition. We were actually computing x times y, but we did it by repeating plus x operation for y times over and over again. On the other hand, we also studied how to compute addition. Okay, so this is the program for addition. And this program computes a plus b using only plus one and minus one. If the program is embedded here, as we learned in topic one, multiplication itself can be computed just plus one and minus one. Uh, this is the actual program that we have already embedded this part. The left blue flamed part computes plot plus x and store it in the variable plot. We learned that we can write this part with plus one and minus one like this, this right blue flamed part. That's of course possible, but the program becomes really cumbersome if we do it like this. It's not a problem because we can use a plus x, uh, this operation, this addition in this case. But generally, we may not have the computation that we want to use. In this case, we have to write it as a program by ourselves. However, this program is embedded without change. The whole program becomes very cumbersome, like this. In these situations, functions come in handy. This auxiliary computation part is defined as a function and the program can be written more neatly if the function is used in the program itself. That is how to use what are called functions in programming. For example, let's consider this example. First, we define the part computing a plus b as a function. I will explain later how to define it but here we have almost the same program. Let's give the function the name add. This function named add is defined here. Given a and b, the function computes a plus b. This program can be rewritten using this function. Specifically speaking, this blue part, this blue area where we were just doing addition can be rewritten in one line like this. This statement orders the computers to compute prod plus x uh, using the function add and then store it to prod. In this way, the part with auxiliary computation is defined as a function and once function is defined, we can write the value of prod plus x as add prod comma x, just like a mathematical function then prod plus x will be calculated. In this way, we can write the program more simply and naturally. By the way, for the computer, this is a command to execute the computation given in the function definition. This execution is referred as a function call in programming. Let's look at more closely how to define the function. We write the definition of the function between def, def, and n here. Next to the def, this add is the name of the function. We wanted to call this function add, so let's go with add. Next to it, a comma b, which are arguments. To put it simply, the arguments are regarded as input variables. That is, when the function is called, 
the actual values will be passed to the variable stated here. In this case, A and B receive numbers. For example, here, if we write add prod comma x like this, the value of prod and the value of x are stored in A and B respectively, and the computation stated here is executed. As we have studied, these are statements for computing the addition, the computation that this function is supposed to do. The last statement here is the return command. This tells the computer to finish computing the function. And since we have sum in here, in this case, the value of variable sum to the place is returned to the place where the function is called as the value of the function. By the way, this return command can be placed at various positions within the range of function definition. As soon as the execution reaches this command, the computation of the function is terminated. After the function definition, the rest of the program can be written as before, while you can now use the defined function. For example, you can write add prod comma x in the arithmetic expression like this. This calls the function add, and after its computation, the value of the function should be prod plus x, of course, if the function is correctly defined, is passed here. 